Devin here with BasketMakerAtLittle.com. What kind of accuracy is the Atlittle capable of? That's what I want to address in this video. A thorough discussion of accuracy is going to require us to break the topic down a little bit. and We can break it down by thinking about the ballistics of a projectile. Ballistics take on three different forms for a projectile system like this. There is the internal ballistics, that's the actual launching of the projectile and all the mechanisms that go with that. There's the external ballistics, and that's the flight of the projectile through the atmosphere. And then there's the terminal ballistics when it impacts the target. So we don't have to worry about terminal ballistics for this video. Now, considering the external ballistics of a atlatl dart, an atlatl dart has to flex. So you can see, if I grab the tail of this thing, it flexes quite a bit, and the purpose of that is that it has to flex to compensate for the arcing motion of the launch and maintain a straight trajectory to the target. At the end of the throw, the dart slides off the hook as the outlet uh, starts to rotate over. And then compression, the energy stored in compression, results in oscillations on its way to the target. Darts can also exhibit uh, what we call crankshaft rotation, where they're staying flexed on one side and they're actually rotating around. But whatever the case, it's clear that outlet darts flex a lot more than arrows, and so they're going to have lower accuracy right off the, the get-go than arrows, and actually than uh, javelins as well, because they don't flex as much either. However, the deviation at the tip of the dart is only about 5 centimeters, or maybe a little bit more and I'll post more information about these things in an article called Information for Hunters on our website. Then we get to the much harder variable to measure, which is the uh, internal ballistics of the dart, because this actually comes down to the skill of the operator. So once an op operator has been naturalized, the projectile system has built up the muscle memory, then it's actually a matter of being able to concentrate on the target. This is where the bow and arrow really has an advantage because because it fires using energy storage in the limbs, it fires more consistently. With an atlatl you have to coordinate your body just right and uh, get everything just right to hit the target. So I've been throwing for about 20 years now uh, since I was about 16 and I'm fairly naturalized to the weapon. I won't say I'm the most accurate person in the world, but what I want to give you in this video is a, a sense of what a person is capable of using an atlatl at various distances downrange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this can here that I found out in the woods while hunting out at 10, 15, and 20 meters from the camera. I'm going to stand right by the camera and throw at it, and we'll just see what kind of patterns I can get right around that can. I like to throw it a a target like this because my experience with this weapon is uh, somewhat similar to Ishii's, the last um, wild Yahi Indian, the last wild Indian in, in North America, who was really good at uh, shooting his bow in a hunting kind of context, but really did poorly with uh, targets. So big targets, I have trouble concentrating on actually the center of the target. I tend to concentrate on the whole thing. And uh, for that reason, I, I don't know that uh, target shooting is the best way to judge the accuracy of a weapon like this in a, a hunting kind of context, which is really what I'm interested in. All right, I'm standing right by the camera. The can is 10 meters from us, based on my pacing, which is fairly consistent with meters. And let's see how many times I can hit it in three shots, or if I can hit it. Now 15 meters from the camera, so we'll do the same thing, two sets of three, or until I knock it out of the screen.
stand is now at 20 meters, right up in the shadow. What I think that showed was that a small target can indeed be hit at uh, far distances out to 20 meters, but in terms of consistency, being able to consistently get the darts within the size of like an animal's thoracic cavity, of a deer's thoracic cavity. Generally for me, my range is between 10 and 15 meters, something about like 12 or 13 meters is my preferred range, and if I was hunting big game, I would really hesitate to shoot beyond that unless I was really confident in that particular situation of the shot. This is actually consistent with ethnographic information of accuracy, especially in Australia where they were still hunting terrestrial animals during colonial times. Hunters were usually trying to close in to 10 meters or closer to the animal before they fired, but in cases where they could definitely not get close to the animal and they needed to bring home meat, they took chances and took longer shots. I hope this information was helpful to you. In a lot of states, outlevels are not legal for hunting yet, and we're still trying to build up the interest in the weapon and uh, the understanding, helping people to understand what the weapon is and what it's capable of for a hunting kind of context.